Now let's take a look at the data link layer. The data link layer provides the following features. Framing, control codes, optional data link confirmations, addressing, and error detection. Let's look at the data link layer header in detail. The data link header begins with the 0564 framing characters, followed by the frame length, a control code, destination and source addresses, and CRC bytes that are added to the end of the data link header. The framing characters indicate the start of a new frame. Receiving devices monitor incoming data looking for the 0564 sequence as an indicator that a new frame has begun. The length indicator indicates the number of bytes in the frame, starting with the byte after the length character, the control field. The length does not include any CRC characters. The first bit of the data link control character indicates the direction of the message. The next bit indicates whether this message is from a primary or initiating station, or if it is a secondary or responding station. As we'll see later, both master and out stations may be primary or secondary stations. When the direction bit is set, indicating the frame is being sent from a master, the next two bits can be used for frame sequencing. If the message contains confirmed data, the FCV, or frame count valid bit, is set, and the FCB, frame count bit, toggles with each frame. The last four bits contain the function code, which will be explained later. If the direction bit is zero, the FCV and FCB bits are replaced by an unused bit and a data flow control bit. The function codes vary depending on whether or not the primary bit is set. This table outlines function codes and frame types when the primary bit is set. This table outlines the function codes that are used when the primary bit is not set. DNP3 uses a balanced link layer. With a balanced link layer, all devices are considered equal. This means that some sort of collision avoidance is necessary. This can be accomplished by full duplex connection so that communications may flow in both directions simultaneously without conflict, or via media access control, such as Carrier Sense Multiple Access, CSMA, or Carrier Detect, CD, at the physical layer. This picture shows the difference between primary and secondary frames. In the first example, the master sends an application request message and requests link layer acknowledgement. In this message, the DIR bit is set since the message originated from the master, and the PRI bit will be set since this is a primary message. The outstation then sends an acknowledgement. The DIR bit will not be set in this message because it is from the outstation. The PRI bit will also not be set because this is a secondary message. Next, the outstation sends an application response message. Although this is a response at the application layer, at the link layer, the outstation is initiating the message. Therefore, the PRI bit will be set. The DRI bit is not set, however, since this message is from the outstation. Since the slave requested link layer confirmation, the master sends an acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is a link layer secondary message, so the PRI bit will not be set. However, the DIR bit will be set since this message is from the master. The DNP3 link layer contains both source and destination addresses. The provision of a source and destination address simplifies message routing in certain network topologies. For example, having both source and destination address supports peer-to-peer -peer systems in which a device can change its role from outstation to master. A DNP link address is a device's logical address. A physical device is permitted to respond to multiple addresses. That is, it may contain multiple logical devices. Each device will appear to the master as a completely separate device. The destination and source address are always 16 bits and are transmitted least significant byte first. The application layer does not contain addresses. The CRC calculation is defined in the DNP3 specification volume 4 data link layer. The CRC is transmitted least significant byte first and is included at the end of the link layer header after each 16 bytes within a frame and at the end of each frame. The next slide provides an exercise using the communication protocol test harness to analyze link layer messages. This is followed by a short quiz to help reinforce these concepts.